Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome back to another edition of Meet the Opposition. This week I'm joined by Dom Housen, the man who covers all things Sheffield Wednesday for Yorkshire Live ahead of the Blues trip to Hillsborough this weekend. It's the battle of the big dogs in League One. Once again, the last game, it was a 1-1 draw at Portman Road. And uh, Dom, what has happened since then? Sheffield Wednesday, have they been up and down? And uh, But they've had some good results in there. But uh, overall, how has it been? And welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Inconsistent. That is what Sheffield Wednesday has been all season. 10 wins, 10 draws, only six defeats, but too many draws. That's what's really killed them. The reverse fix ships, which that was a prime example of one that Wednesday should have uh, seen that one and got that one over the line, but big mistake at the end from Bailey Peacock Farrell. And yeah, defensive problems that's been at the heart of Wednesday's issue at the beginning of the season they kept quite a few clean sheets and that's evaporated really over the last three to four months that they, they kept hardly any um and they have got a bit of a soft underbelly you know they played well at Oxford last week and you score two goals away from home you shouldn't be losing and Unfortunately, they were pegged back twice and then they've conceded from set play and they've conceded a lot of goals from set plays. And that will be no doubt an area that Ipswich should be targeting, you know, 12 for the season from corners and free kicks. It's a, It's been a real weakness for Wednesday. But on the flip side, they've made some new signings in January. The ninth, only six points off the playoffs. There's 20 matches left to go. I'd suggest they're going to need to win half of those if they're going to get in the top six. You look on paper and you think they have got one of the strongest squads in the division. They haven't produced consistently. You look at the last two matches and attacking-wise, there are signs that things are coming together. So if Jordan Story and Harley Dean, who they've added defensively, if they can help shore things up at the back, then there's still a chance that, you know, Wednesday can force their way into that top six. Yeah, and um, we've only made one, well, two signings this window, but you guys have made three signings um, on loan. Um, you mentioned two of them already, and also another one is the the young Arsenal striker, uh, Tyrese John Jules. Um, talking about injuries, three names who are going to be on a lot of Towns fans' lips when they see those missing. Dominic Orfa, Che Dunkley, Lewis Gibson, you know, key players in that defence. Is that going to be a big miss for Sheffield Wednesday? I know they've probably been out for a while now, but um, Jordan Story could be coming in. He was sort of linked with Town as well, part of that long list of interested clubs. But uh, but yeah, is that going to be big misses? They've missed Dunkley and I Orfa in the air, definitely, and the physicality that they bring to the defence. I don't think Wednesday would have conceded as many goals from set pieces if they'd had both of them fit for more of the season. They have been unfortunate with injuries. It has hit them hard. Still no excuse for some of the performances that they've turned in. You know, you're looking at just after Christmas. They, you know, they were hit by a COVID outbreak. And so they went nearly three games without, three weeks, sorry, without a game. But then Sunderland, yeah, they got torn apart and were deservedly hammered and you expected there to be a reaction. There wasn't one at Shrewsbury. They were lacklustre and disappointing that day too. And they've not, not been able to sort of perform consistently, you know, co and coherently as a team and get things right at both ends of the pitch. And that's why they are where they are in the table. Um, but as I said before, there is still time for them to turn things around and they have been strong at home, only the one defeat. So they can take heart from that. And seven of the next 10 matches are at Hillsborough. Uh, and I would suggest they're going to need to win a lot of them. And if they do, then they could you know, find themselves climbing up the table again. Definitely. It's, it seems it's Town and Sheffield Wednesday are just mirroring each other. You know, it's of course, we've sacked our manager. Darren Moore still in charge. But um, two big teams in League One. And they're just being inconsistent. And... You know, the big thing with Sheffield Wednesday, though, home form. You mentioned it, Hillsborough. You know, you've got a lot of games, but one defeat all season in the league at home. Um, what do you think that is? It's just the, the crowd or it's just is that just home advantage? 
not really sure as I don't think that they've performed significantly better at home than what they have away. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, there have been some of the matches at home where they've really imposed themselves and they've played on the front foot and Plymouth and Sunderland, they both spring to mind uh, as you know two of their sort of outstanding home performances. But uh, no, I can't really explain it. You know, they, they've usually got, I think, the first goal. And as we know, the first goal was crucial. So I think that, you know, that's then given them a platform to build on and that makes it tough then for the opposition when they come to Hillsborough. That's it. You know, when Wednesday get the crowd behind them, then they can be pretty formidable at Hillsborough. So perhaps that's got something to do with it. And they needed to be strong at home as away from home. That's where the inconsistency has really been. I think it's four wins from 15. And so, it, yeah, the majority of their points have been picked up at home. And they've got a lot of the teams in and around them in the table to come, starting with Ipswich. But they've got Wigan and Rotherham on the horizon. So that, that's it. I think these sort of clutch of home matches they've got coming up, they could potentially define their season. Mm, big statement there. Uh, let's go and talk about the team then, Dom. Uh, I'm going to put the possible um, Sheffield Wednesday 11 down below. Um, 3 5 2 is the formation. Um, pick out a few players there. Um, you, you have, you're have you thinking Story could be making a start. Uh, John Windass coming in. Josh Windass, not John Windass. Josh Windass. <laughs> Great player, by the way. And uh, John Jules coming in as well. Uh, any other players to, to pick out and the players I mentioned as well? Well, there should be a caveat with this, which is I never get the team right ever okay. uh, and I have to predict it every single week. Yeah. But I would be gobsmacked if there isn't a change in defence. Now that they've signed two centre-halves in the last week, yeah, Jordan Story was on the bench on Saturday. He didn't get on, but he's now been training with them for over a week. So I, I think Story will come in. And they can move Liam Palmer to the left-hand side. You know, Liam Palmer's a very flexible player that Wednesday got in the ranks. And I think it'd be Marvin Johnson who would miss out. And then the other couple of changes that I'm going for, Josh Windass is knocking on the door. And I think he has to play. He's you know, scored four times and got an assist in six appearances this season. Darren Moore is try to not rush him back into the fold. He missed the first half of the season after hamstring surgery. And that was a big, big loss. You know, I genuinely believe that if Wednesday would had Josh Windass and Massimo Luongo both fit for you know, longer periods of the season, I think they would have more points on the board. They're both two really influential players in this Wednesday team. And Windass can play in that, a sort of attacking advanced midfield role behind the front two in this 3-5-2 formation that Wednesday have been playing since October. So that's I could see that, you know, Wednesday have got to go out and be aggressive and really go for it on Saturday. You know, draws are not getting them anywhere. They've got to get back to winning and try and go on a winning run. Uh, and that's why the next few weeks are vitally important for them. So Windass has to play, and I, I'm, I've said there. And then Tyrese John Jules, he can play anywhere across the front three. No guarantee he's going to come into the side. It wouldn't surprise me if he was on the bench, but because he brings extra pace, I, I'm just wondering that I think they may go with him and Lee Gregory up top. But they have got other attacking options there. That you know, they've got Florian Camberry, who I think will come back into the squad, but he's been out for over a month, and it's hugely important that Wednesday get back to winning ways on Saturday. And so, I, I can see Darren Moore maybe throwing in at least two of the three new signings. Okay, then. Um, how how do you reckon this game will will pan out? Then it's going to be, a, I'm sure, a big crowd at Hillsborough. A lot of town fans coming over. Um, how do you reckon it will pan out? And yeah, of course, Peacock Farrell will be looking at Macaulay Bond and saying, you're not doing that again to me. Um, because that was a big talking point from the, the draw early in the season. So uh, what do you reckon, Em? I think it's going to be entertaining. You know, I think both sides will try to get the ball down and play. And, you know, Wednesday, as I mentioned before, the last two matches, uh, there have been positive signs in the attacking sense that they're sort of getting their act together. 
And Ipswich are in great form, as we know, with four wins from the five matches since the new man went in. And uh, yeah, you know, Wednesday will show Ipswich lots of respect, but I think they will try to press high and force Ipswich into mistakes early on as well. And you know, where they call Plymouth cold in the last home match was that they couldn't, you know, Plymouth couldn't live with them with the intensity and the aggression that they played with. And so if if Wednesday can reach those heights, then I think they give themselves a great chance of getting three points. Okay. Score prediction there, my friend. I know it's always hard to try to predict. I'm sure Wednesday, I don't know if you like predictions. Yeah. yeah, well, Wednesday aren't keeping clean sheets, and I don't think they're going to keep a clean sheet on Saturday, but I am going to go for a narrow Wednesday win, so 2-1 Wednesday. Ooh, okay then. Um, so I'll find a question here, and it's one I should have asked in the green room, um, but I didn't. Um, any advice for fans coming down? Um, it's been a while since they've probably gone to Hillsborough. I'm, I'm sure not much changed, but any advice? Any pubs they can go to? Anything before the game? Uh, yeah, there's quite a few on Peniston Road, um, pubs wise that they can go to. But I mean, crucially, Plan B, the restrictions, you know, they're no longer there now. So. You know, whereas in the last home match, you know, supporters would have had to have shown the COVID pass and were advised to get there early. We've gone back to sort of normal from this weekend. So, you know, that's something that, you know, Ipswich fans don't have to be as mindful about, you know, as they would have been a few weeks ago. So that's good news. But yeah, no, there's loads of places to, yeah, grab a bite to eat or, you know, go for a pub round, you know, sort of Peniston Road. I recommend the Riverside Cafe. That's a very nice one. Uh, and that's not a million miles away from the away end. So, uh, yeah, you know, if Ipswich fans are looking for somewhere to go for a drink or a bite to eat, that would be the place to go. Perfect. And uh, as you said, I think it's going to be an exciting game. I think it's going to be an entertaining game. Hopefully um, it is. Hopefully it's not a goalless draw and it's just nothing's happened. Um, hopefully we haven't jinxed it. But, yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, Dom, thank you very much for joining me as ever. Uh, let us know in the comments your thoughts, your feelings going into this one. And we'll all see you in Hillsborough. See you then. Bye-bye for now.